Hey everybody, I'm Madeline Sklar, host of the Social ROI Chat. We had such a great one today. I'm here with our very special guest. Please welcome Warwick Brown. Hey Warwick, how are you? Hey, I am great, Madeline. Hello, uh, and hello to everybody that was on the Social ROI Chat, Manage Flitter. It was a really great chat. I absolutely loved it. I had a great time. Yes, it was a lot of fun. We talked about lots of great things, but before we dive in, I'd love for you to tell everyone a little bit about yourself. So Warwick Brown, an Australian who now lives in London, and I, uh, I have a company called Account Manager Tips, which is really about helping organizations uh, you know, drive revenue, improve their customer retention, and doing that through their account management teams through kind of quick, easy, simple, straightforward tactics that you know get the job done but don't take up a lot of time. So that's essentially me, and that's what I do. That's you in a nutshell. I love it. Um, our topic today was tips for dealing with demanding customers. And this is such a great topic to have on the social ROI chat because, hey, we all have to deal with demanding customers, right? So what better uh, to get some awesome tips than to have you on Warwick to uh, discuss this with us. Um, let's have you give some expanded thoughts to a couple of the questions. Um, that's what's kind of fun about doing the live stream. You know, we go from the Twitter chat which feels more like texting and we don't see each other but now we can come on video hang out everyone can kind of just kick back relax a little bit and uh, have you share a little bit more uh, on these questions so we'll start with question number one do we need to be our clients friend in order to provide good professional advice so no that's like, let's just keep it short. Uh, that's a short answer. Look, firstly, let me just say, I think it was a fantastic topic and an unusual one for a social media chat because I think often it's about social media marketing, content marketing, you know, how to gain, you know, gain followers or engage with your, your social media following. So I thought this was a really unique and interesting topic for this type of a chat. So, um, you know, really appreciate being invited to that. And look, I don't think you need to be friends with your client. Now, that's not to say you don't need to be likable or that you don't need to do your best to, you know, be civil and, you know, maintain like a professional relationship. But that doesn't involve crossing boundaries uh, into kind of friendship territory. You know, friendly and friends are, are two different things to me. And I think actually keeping a professional distance helps you with your judgment, helps you be a little bit more, um, kind of neutral when it comes to some of the decisions you might have to make or some of the advice you might have to give. And um, I think, you know, for me, I prefer to get my clients to do a lot of the talking. And I think, you know, you, keep, keeping that focus on the client rather than trying to sort of see, you know, build a friendship out of it, um, I think is really the best advice, to be honest, because of it, inevitably it goes pear-shaped. It always, always seems to fall over sooner or later. If you right. To and grab a wine after lunch and go catch movies on the weekend and hang out with your kids and their kids. I think it's just asking for trouble. Yeah, good point. I love that. I think that's really great. It was such a great question. It was really uh, fun getting everyone's response, but you're making really good points with that. Uh, let's move over to question number two. When establishing a relationship with a client, what questions might you ask? Look, I think you want to, again, you want to keep your client talking. You want to make sure that, particularly if it's a new client, for, I mean, firstly, if it's a new customer, that is your one single opportunity to really ask any question you can possibly think of because they expect you to be ignorant. They expect you not to know the answers to the questions about their business. A year or two down the track, if you're asking those same questions, they're like, does this guy not know anything about us? But, you know, in those first couple of months, you've got the kind of permission to go full throttle and ask whatever you kind of want to, do, to want to know. So I think that's definitely the time to target a lot of your question and answer um, sessions. But look, I think start with what do you, and a lot of people said this in the chat today, which I thought was really great. You know, what are your goals? How are you measured? What do you need to achieve this year? What What is your boss expecting from you? What, you know, what do the shareholders want? Like, what's your focus? I think start there and that really does help um, open up that conversation about wider business goals, about objectives, about, you know, how you're going to get there. And another top, another thing I really liked that somebody mentioned in the chat was ask them what, what went well before, what have they done before that worked and maybe didn't work so you can avoid some of the pitfalls that maybe, um, you know, weren't so successful last time, or you've got that foundation to start with what already worked, you know, and, and build from that. So I like that, uh, that answer that somebody mentioned in the chat as well. 
Yeah, I like that. That's great. Uh, I want to do a quick little shout out to our, uh, our our friends here that are with us live in the chat room. We got Jim, who's here. Hey, Jim, good to see Jim. you. Always great, always great to see him. And uh, we also have Lucille. Hi, Lucille. Hey, and uh, she said she said she missed the chat, but she's uh, happy to make this live. And that's one of the reasons why I do this after chat, because sometimes people can't make the, mm -hmm. the live Twitter chat and sometimes they can make it here for the after chat. Plus we record this. So it's available and it's lives on, on uh, Facebook, but also on uh, the Managed Flitters YouTube. Uh, Jim made a good point uh, when we were talking earlier. He said, you need to let your clients talk. Otherwise you won't know their concerns. Such mm -hmm. a great point, right? Absolutely. Let your clients do all the talking. And in fact, you know, there was that thing about asking a question with a question. And, you know, if I go to my clients don't know that much about me, because any time that we have a conversation, I'm usually asking them, you know, my response is to ask them more questions. So they might say to me, oh, so what did you do on the weekend? And they'll be like, oh, well, I saw a film, but I'll be like, straight away, I'm right into what did they do? What are they up to? What do they want to do? You know what I mean? Like I, I quickly bounce it back. So the topic isn't me. I make sure that the topic is a customer. So Jim's absolutely right. Just keep them talking, keep asking questions and make sure that you uh, just keep them, keep them people's favorite. What is it? The people's favorite topic is themselves. It's not hard to keep your client yes. talking. If, you, if you've got a few questions up your sleeve, it really isn't. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's such a good point. Like, like when Jim said, you know, getting their concerns when, mm -hmm. when you keep them talking and there, there's so many benefits to doing this, you know, so I totally love that answer. Aaron's here. We want to do a shout out to Aaron. Thanks for joining us live hey, here. Uh, but also hello to all the replay viewers. We love you just as much too, but we do this every week. So uh, do mark your calendar, come join us live every Tuesday afternoon, although evening for like you Warwick over in London. So oh, it's late, but that's okay. I would uh, for Managed Foot and for Madeline Scala, I would pull an all night. Aww. I'm good. Oh, you are so sweet. We get a lot of people over in England that come on and as a guest on this chat. And I, I know it's late over there. So I always appreciate that. Um, all right. So let's do a few more questions. Uh, let's skip ahead to question number five. What tips do you have for remaining positive in the context of providing social media support? Uh, look, I think you've got to have confidence in yourself. I think if you doubt your own uh, abilities, you doubt the value that you're bringing, you doubt what you're trying to achieve for your customer, that already in itself creates some negativity or some insecurities. And that can really be, you know, a, a client that's demanding can really feel, they sense the fear almost. So I think absolutely start with knowing that you deliver value. You're a partner of your customer for a reason. They picked you for a reason because you're going to help their business in whatever big or small way that you may be doing that. And I think sometimes we think, oh, well, we're just a low level supplier. We just provide the envelopes. You know, we provide the paper for the photocopier. You're still adding some sort of um, value to the supply chain in whatever way that is. And, you know, your role when you have a customer is to improve that, expand upon that, find out better ways for you to optimize that. So I think there's no reason to think small when you, even though you may think you're not that important overall as a supplier. Uh, so I think that's number one. And number two, is to really think about what might else be going on in your customer's world. You know, you might have a client that's very demanding, but maybe their boss is demanding. Maybe that's turning them into this demanding monster or this difficult customer just because there's other pressures. Maybe there's uh, job fear. Maybe there's layoffs. Maybe they've got problems at home. Maybe there's challenges just in general that, you know, you don't know about. And I think that always helps me think, you know what, Maybe I remember uh, I read, not read, I heard somebody say something about, you know, when you get cut off, you know, you're riding, you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off and you go, Urgh! and then he, he said, well, imagine if they were going to visit their dying mother who was on her last breath or they had been unemployed for six months and they finally got a job interview. How differently would you think about being cut off on the freeway, you know, versus your initial reaction? And that's the way I like to think about it when I have a demanding customer. I mean, it may be a lot of BS. Maybe they're just completely horrible. But at least it makes me feel more positive, you know? I love that. What a great way of looking at things. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, also, I see that Ryan Roden is here. Hi, Ryan. So good to see Ryan. you. Always great. 
always great seeing all these awesome people I know that just come on over and hang out with us here on the uh, live stream. So shout out to everybody who is joining us. All right, to wind this down, let's do um, question number seven, the last question mm -hmm. of the chat. How do you gracefully part ways with a client? I think it's important, obviously, to do your best to keep them. And, uh, you know, once you've exhausted all your options, I think you have to uh, let them know that, look, there's no hard feelings. You appreciate where they're coming from. Make sure you get a full debrief, though. You know, uh, sometimes it's not, you know, the client might lie to you and not, or, or want, not want to, they may want to spare your feelings while you are, you know, in the process of uncoupling, you know, but maybe even a month or two later, ring them and say, look, now that you've some time has passed. So if you don't get the feedback you're looking for straight up, maybe make a call to them a month or two later to find out exactly what really drove them to uh, somebody else and then make their transition easy. So if, you know, make sure their accounts payable is all, you know, accounts receivable is all in order, give them any reporting, any data, uh, any information they might need, help them transition to a new supplier if there's anything you can do to make that simpler. Um, you know, without compromising your sort of integrity. And then um, make sure you've got a plan to keep in touch because I can't tell you how many clients I've had that have come back. And that may be sometimes a month or two when they find out their new supplier just, you know, isn't what they expected or, you know, they got sold the dream and the reality is, you know, underwhelming. Or they may come back years later and, uh, you know, remembered you and remembered the good experience they had when they left and respected that professionally and, you know, come back to you later when things change in their business and yours. So that's my advice. Excellent advice. Lucille chimed in and she said, Brene Brown says to consider that everyone is doing their best changes that changes your perspective. Uh, love Brene Brown. So Great so point true. to that. Great point. And uh, I, I don't always answer the, the all the questions during the chat because I'm like so busy running the chat, but sometimes I'll like throw in my answer. And my response was be kind always. You know, there's yeah. never anything wrong with some kindness, even though when people part ways with us. So uh, you never, oh, and as here we go, Lucille says, never burn a bridge. Great point. No. <laughs> Absolutely. You never know when you may cross that again. Somebody else said that in the chat too. Um, and it's so true. And, you know, sometimes even um, I've had clients that have ended up being coming and working for my organization or I've crossed paths with them in different organizations or different contexts. So even if potentially, or you've gone to somebody else and then it turns out there, that's the person they went to and suddenly you're working with them again. So absolutely yeah. never, never, never burn a bridge. Because Unless, it, it kind of, it's kind of a small world. It doesn't always feel, sometimes it feels like we're in a big world, right? But then sometimes in our work life, it's a small world. It's insane how small the world is. It's, uh, I mean, yeah. you know, and I think sometimes like the universe conspires to throw you together and sometimes <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah, this has been so great, Warwick. I really appreciate you taking time today out of your schedule to come spend time with us and answer all these questions. What is the best way for people to reach out to you? So Warwick A. Brown, uh, or uh, you can just search the hashtag AM tips. That's on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter. I took a leaf out of your book, which was to use your hashtag years before you even needed it. So I am following your advice and hashtag AM tips is kind of where you find me everywhere. I love that hashtag. You did good. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another great chat. So until then, we'll just see you out and about on social media, probably Twitter. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, Warwick. Bye.